Alright, uh, welcome back to Data Management. Today we're going to start Chapter 5. Um, chapter 5 is all about combinator combinations, which is a, another option of combinatorics. So far we've covered Chapter 4, which is permutations. Um, so we're going to start looking at what we call organized counting with Venn diagrams. So a Venn diagram is a way to organize our information. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about set theory as well. So in chapter four, we talked about tree diagrams. So tree diagrams were a good way of, of organizing items that need, where order mattered. Okay, so we wanted to see the sequence of the events being chosen. Venn diagrams don't really, um, order doesn't really work with them. They're more just about how the relationship happens. So how is one thing related to another? Are they, um, is it object in two things or have two characteristics or just one? These are all aspects of what we call set theory. So a set is a collection of distinct objects, um, usually denoted with an uppercase letter, um, usually set A or set B. Okay. And the set contains objects, and we usually talk about the characteristics of the objects. Um, so the objects inside the a set are usually called elements or members. Okay, so example set A, where set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8. So those would have four elements or four members. And we also denote, if we're talking about the members, um, we use the curly brackets um, to note that this is a set. Another set is set X, uh, red, green, blue. So it could have letters, it could have numbers, it could have words. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it has some sort of common characteristic, then we can call it a set. Um, talk about um, the set of whole numbers, integers, set of uh, rational numbers, irrational numbers, real numbers. Those are all actually sets. Um, and we can spend ages and ages studying the sets and finding their characteristics and seeing how the characteristics mm -hmm. change once we change some sort of operator or something that works on them. Speaking of operators, um, we can use the notation NA with brackets around the A is equal to the, uh, the number of elements in A. Um, so NX is equal to 4, NA is equal to, or sorry, NA is equal to 4, NX is equal to 3. Um, so sometimes we just need to know how many how many elements are in the set rather than the actual elements themselves. Uh, another interesting set is called the empty set. Um, it's denoted here with the circle with a slash through it. And as you can notice, um, the empty set is equal to a set with no elements in it. Okay. Um, this is very important later on in math when you get into the higher end of algebra and things like that. And we'll talk a little bit more about it during this chapter. If two sets have the same elements in common, there are no elements in common, they're called disjoint, which means there's nothing common about them. Two sets A and B are equal, if and only if, that's the notation there is IFF, they have the same elements. If and only if means it works, uh, definition works both ways. So we can say two sets are equal if they have the same elements, or if two sets have the same elements, then they are equal. So if and only if works both ways, or an if statement only works one way. Following elements, elements of set B are also elements of set A, and B is a subset of set A, as done here with the kind of C thing with the line underneath it. And there's also a diagram there, with A being around a large set and B being inside the small set. Um, so this is a Venn diagram. Um, we're going to be using them quite often. Um, Venn diagram has a rectangle, usually. Um, some letter in the corner, usually S, to represent the universal set, which is all, all elements um, that might be in the situation. And for each set that we're really discussing, we have a draw a circle. So we have set A and set B. So this one circle is all the elements in A, the other circle is all the elements in B. 
Sometimes they overlap, sometimes they don't. So if they don't overlap, that's what we refer to as the disjoint. And if they do overlap, then they're joined or intersect. Um, so if we look at all the elements in A and B, we look at what we call the union of A and B, or A or B. Okay. Um, so the union is used with the upper, with the U kind of shaped um, symbol. The intersection of A and B is A and B, so the elements that are in A and B. So the red, red section here is the intersection, and it's denoted by the upside down U shape symbol. And we also use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, which says that the union of A and B, the number of elements in the union of A and B, is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in A or B, A, union, intersection of B. Um, the reason why we have to subtract these elements is that if we look at, we go back and think about it, um, the intersection is counted twice if we look at all the elements in A and the number of elements in B. So we subtract one just so that things are counted twice. So, an example. Um, so Dr. Singh has 50 patients with the following symptoms. 30 have headaches, 24 have colds, 12 have neither. And we want to draw a Venn diagram. So there's our Venn diagram, so there's the universal set of all the patients of 50 patients. Some of them have headaches, some of them have colds, and 12 have neither. Okay, so 12 outside are two circles. Determine how many have both a headache and a cold. Okay, so again, we can use our principle of inclusion, calling that there's 50 patients, 12 have neither. So really, we're talking about 38 patients. So Use our principle of inclusion. So 38 equals 30, which is the sum of people with headaches, and 24 people have a cold, and then we subtract the intersection. So the intersection is really what we want to find out. They yeah, have both a headache and a cold. So we do some calculations, move things around, we get 54, which is the sum of the two sets, minus 38, which is the one people that patients that have headache or cold, and we end up with 16. So we know that the intersection of headaches and cold is 16. So then, now that we know, we can take our 30, 30 minus 16 is 14, 24 minus 16 is 8. So we can finish off our Venn diagram. So here's the intersection, people that just have a headache, and people that just have a cold. We also look at more than one set using the principle of inclusion. Exclusion, we just have to go through another round of adding and subtracting. So here we have three sets. So the number of elements that's in the union of A, B, and C is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B plus the number of elements in C minus the intersection of A and B minus the number of in A and C minus the number of B and C. And then we have to add in or add back in um, the intersection. And A, B, and C. So we've subtracted the elements too many times, so I need to put them back there. That's the last statement. Okay. Um, also, working with three sets, we can also look at various unions. So remember, the union of A and B is all the elements in A and B. The union of A and C is all the elements in A and C. The union of B and C is all the elements in B and C, and their intersections, so A and B, so the intersection is just this part here, A and C is just this part here, B and C is just that part there, and finally the intersection of A, B, and C is just the middle part. Okay, so whenever we're working with a Venn diagram, we have to fill in the numbers. I like to work from the middle middle part and work my way out. So I do inter intersection of all three, intersection of two, the intersection of the other two, and then work my way out. That way I get all the numbers. 
satisfied. Okay, there are some questions to try, and I'll look at. Discuss vendor items a little bit more in class tomorrow.